it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I am in the process of making thank you gifts for my September shoppers. Uh, so this is the gift that I am making. Um, I've got a few more to make so I thought I would jump on now and show you what I'm making um, and then continue. So it's just a couple of pencils um, in a box all ready for Halloween. Uh, and I thought they would arrive within, you know, the, the lead up to Halloween. So assuming that they like Halloween, it will be a perfect gift. Obviously you could make it in other card, uh, card and designer series paper, but this is the one that I'm putting together today. So let me pop those over to one side and get those ready to post out. Um, I've got my bits ready. There's not a huge amount of card needed and there's almost no designer series paper. I should credit Rachel Tessiman in the US for the original idea for this. Uh, I've changed it up a wee bit, but um, it, it did come from her originally. So I've also changed some of the measurements, I would just say. So I've got my nice new trimmer. Um, I have got a piece of pumpkin pie cardstock. This is cut at eight and three quarters by four inches and I will need to extend my arm. You will find that if you've got a piece of card that's more than six inches wide uh, that you do need to extend the arm otherwise it hits the, the butt board. Um, it's fine, it's not an issue, it's just something to get used to doing. So on the long side we are going to score make sure I get this right. Yes, um, we are going to score at three eighths. Actually, we're going to score a quarter of an inch from this side. And then I'm going to do all of the scores from this side. So quarter of an inch here. So give that a good score. And these lines on um, my trimmer are at quarter inch increments, which is fantastic. Um, three eighths of an inch. So that's your quarter. You want halfway between half an inch and a quarter of an inch. And one of the lovely things about the new trimmer is that you've got butt boards all the way across. So um, whereas the old trimmer had a gap, which did make doing narrow score lines and cutting narrow bits of card a little challenging. Um, not anymore. Um, one and seven eighths. So an eighth of an inch away from two. And the last one on this side is two and a quarter. So we've, we know that these lines are a quarter of an inch. So two and a quarter. So those are our score lines that way. And then on this side, we want three eighths of an inch. So this is the short edge. We want three eighths of an inch. And then on the other end, we want three eighths of an inch. And three quarters of an inch. So again, we know that these lines are quarter inch increments, so we can go up to there. So that's our scoring. Um, this piece we also need to score, and I have already scored it, but I'll repeat. So this is uh, a really odd measurement, and I'm sorry. So it's one and three eighths from side to side. The length is seven and nine sixteenths. I found that um, the original measurement was a little bit too long. So I've gone seven and nine sixteenths um, and I'm scoring at an inch on either end. And this is really just for a mark. It doesn't get folded. It is just a mark point. Don't need to score anything else. That's everything done with that. So, whoops, trying not to break my new trimmer before I've had it for five minutes. Um, I'm going to burnish all my score lines on my box. And as I say, you don't need to do anything with the score lines on your um, grey insert. This is basic grey insert. Uh, the score lines are there as marker points, which I will come on to in a moment. But I want to make up the box so it can be settling. Uh, while we do everything else. So, 
there's been, I think I've said this before, there's quite a sort of a split in the UK as to whether or not people like Halloween or not. I used to be in the not camp and I'm now in the I love it camp. OK, so we've got this really narrow piece here. That's going to be our seam. So I know that that is going to need to be cut in. This is going to be the back of our box. So I want to cut away that piece. This is going to be the piece that goes over. So let me grab. So this is the back of the box. This is this piece here. And this is the piece that goes in at the top. So I do need to keep the two little squares. Well, one of each of the two little squares. Um, but I'm going to wedge those as I'm cutting, then cut straight with the score line to the outside of the rectangle. And again, the score line here, not here, and then wedge out there and then just cut those bits off because we just need those as the those are the bits that stop the um, the lid collapsing into the box. And then we just want to wedge a little bit out on the piece that tucks in. Then the other end, again, we're going to just trim that at an angle, cut straight on our rectangles, wedge in on our squares, straight on our rectangle, and then wedge out, taking effectively taking that score line out on the square. So straight on the rectangle, wedge on the square, straight on the rectangle, and then trim that little bit off. So that's your scrap, so it's a really good um, use of card. Right, OK, liquid adhesive. You can use tear and tape, but I found that the tear and tape was just a little bit too wide. Now, I know this is going to look odd, but I'm actually putting my adhesive on the piece that it's going to be stuck to, not the seam. And that's purely because it's very narrow. And I found, again, it was easier to do that than to take the, the quarter inch as my first piece to adhere. So push that down. I've used too much glue, so it's coming out. And then I'm going to push it the other way just to make sure that we've got it really well um, adhered down and that everything is straight. You may find that you get a bit of glue on the inside. That's fine. Doesn't matter too much so long as you don't store your box flat, because if you do, it will um, stick together. But I'm not storing my box flat, I'm storing it as a box. So the end, we just pop our little flaps in, pop the back flap in and then a little bit of adhesive across the flap we've got left. Move it about a bit, fold up and then hold it down and I've got a ruler that I'm going to pop in there and just make sure that's well and truly stuck. Um, because it's so small it would have a tendency to flip up again. I'm going to pop that to one side for the moment while I make everything else up. So I've got a piece of, of basic grey card cut at seven and a half by one and three eighths and a piece of designer series paper cut at seven and three eighths by one and a quarter. I know, really odd measurements. Again, actually I'm going to do the, put the glue on my cardstock again, purely because we are working in narrow margins with a small piece of card and a smaller piece of paper. Now you could use snail for this, but on the basis that I was using liquid adhesive for everything else, I decided that's what I would use for this. And it also means you've got that little bit of wiggle room to make sure that everything is nicely um, square, as in central, and then just push everything so that the adhesive spreads out. One little bit of stamping. So I've got, this is from the Spooktacular 
Let me see if I can find it. Where have I put it? Uh, no, no. Once upon a time, there we are. So I've got the Spooktacular Bash and the dies that go with the ornate frames. So that's a bundle and I'm using Open If You Dare because that seemed appropriate for this particular thing. It's a box. So Embossing Buddy, Versamark Ink, Pumpkin Pie uh, card stamp and then grab a piece of very scrap paper and shimmer black embossing powder and if you know me I like to put embossing powder on twice just to make sure then bounce that down pop that there and pour the remains of the embossing powder back into the pot. And that then keeps it all nice and tidy. Get rid of the bits that inevitably float away. Trusty cheese board. And I will heat up my heat tool. Right, okay. So by the time I've made these, or by the time you see these rather, they should be with the recipients. So anyone who shopped with me, oh, I love this, anyone who shopped with me in September uh, gets one of these. They also get a handmade card and um, if they used the uh, host code, they also get some free product. Um, if they didn't use the host code, they don't. Uh, but everyone gets the card and the gift. Um, and then, as I say, if they use the host code, you get the gift as well. Uh, you get the product as well. Right, so I've got my die. Now I'm using the magnetic base plate, so I do need to allow the magnet to tell me where it wants the die to be. There we go. Top plate and wind. I'm trying to do this without knocking the, the, court, the camera and stuff too much. Right. Okay. So that is our little label. Don't need that piece anymore. Don't need that. So pop it down. Right. I've got some mini black dimensionals which come in a combo pack. You get two sheets of minis and two sheets of the larger. And I'm just going to pop these at the corners uh, because I'm going to have a ribbon that's going to come through here. So I don't want too much bulk in the middle or indeed any bulk in the middle. Right, okay, so now we do our little bit for the inside. I'm using the one inch circle punch. Um, you can use a piercing tool if you like, but I have the one inch circle punch, so I'm going to use it. So we're doing a notch on the edge of the score line, a notch in the middle by eye, and one the other side as well, and the same at the other end. Now, as I say, you could just notch this with the edges with a, um, a pair of scissors, just cut a little V, um, and then use your take your pick tool to make a hole in the middle. Uh, this is really just so that we can feed some twine through and I'm using the Cajun craze that comes in the uh, Come Gather Together, Come Gather suite, because um, I thought the Cajun craze was quite a good match. So just pop a little loop through there and then grab I find it easier to do the uh, eraser end of the pencils first. Pop those down, turn over, and then just tie a knot at the back. Now you could use um, little elastic bands if you want. That is certainly what Rachel did in her original. Uh, then you would need to cut here so that you can get the elastic bands in. 
so this was part of the reason that I changed and used twine um, because I didn't really want that cut so so there we go tie those cut to the end short and then do the same at the pointy end so I'm going into my hole round and back into my hole and out to the other side and then this loops round so basically you're doing a figure of eight with the crossover in that hole in the middle and then again just tie and you can be reasonably tough with it uh, I mean it is card um, not paper so you can give it a bit of welly you want these to be reasonably taut um, just so that they hold the pencils in place for you know while you're getting the gift ready to give one slipped out but that's all Ooh, they're both slipping out now okay so we'll just slip them back in again one two there we go okay so i can pop those in my box oh i know what i forgot to do half inch circle punch uh, much easier to do before you've stuck the box together but just do a little notch at the end uh, it just means you've got a little place to put your thumb to take the um, take the flap out pop everything in and slide that in then we just need to stick our patterned paper and card on the box there we go and make sure you've got it the right way up this is the top so we don't want our castles the wrong way up and again because it's liquid adhesive you've got that little bit of wiggle room you can if you want stick this on before you stick your box together um, then you can really do a bit of ee -oo, ee -oo, ee on it but um, I'm quite happy with it as it is so this is the scalloped edged black ribbon from the Monster Bash suite and I'm just going to tie a knot on the side And you'll see I tend to keep my ribbon attached to the reel until I cut. That way you use less ribbon because you can cut exactly the amount you want as opposed to a piece that may or may not be quite to the right length. Take the bits off the back. And... There we have another gift ready to go to my lovely customers. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't already subscribe, bottom right hand corner is the subscription button. If you need any products and you're in the UK, I would be thrilled if you'd shop with me. Uh, the list of what I've used is below. There's also a link to my website below where you'll find close ups and the measurements so there's no need to scrabble writing them down should have said that earlier really shouldn't i anyhow they are on my website thank you very much indeed for joining me today and i look forward to seeing you again very soon thanks a lot <laughs>